right? Shalom. First, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash, double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. Um, yeah, this topic is going to be centered around um, using your members. Um, what's the title? Yeah, using your members properly or using your members wisely. Okay, and it's uh, based on the scripture here. Okay, and uh, by members, you know, I'm talking about your your um, your your body. Okay, your body, your mind, your spirit. Okay, because you know, as the scriptures tell you, you know, for the longest while we were in the world, we were using our members for wickedness. Okay, we were we were we were you know doing things that were that were pleasing to the flesh. Okay, instead of using the flesh to better the spirit, we were actually you know I mean you doing things of the flesh, being subject to sin. Okay, and as the scriptures say, what the wages of sin is death. Okay, that mean what are wages? Wages are what you get paid. All right, what do you what, when you work? All right, what do you get? What you get in return? Okay, so when you sin, your wages or your payment for that is is uh, death. Okay, and that's why Yahweh Shai said, um, "Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to to give every man according to as his work shall be." So you're gonna have some people who will get rewarded; their wages is gonna be death. Some people, their wages is gonna be righteousness, um, or salvation, or deliverance. All right. So now, with that being said, this is Romans chapter six, verse twelve. It says, "Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, all right? That that ye should obey it in the lust thereof." Okay. Now, obviously, you know it's impossible to be one hundred percent righteous right now, being that we are stuck in these mortal bodies, these chains of darkness, as it tells you in the book of Jude. Okay. But let not sin reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Okay, meaning don't become a slave to sin. Okay, and how do you become a slave to sin is when you subject yourself to the lusts of the flesh. Okay, now there are certain things that, yeah, you can do. All right, but other things don't do it because when you end up doing wicked things because it pleases the flesh, because you're given into the lust of the flesh, then guess what? That's when you go off. Okay, that's when you get you get punished by the by the uh, the most high, man. Okay, by how about Shem Yahweh Shai? That because that's the 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 wages of sin. Okay, now their lust. All right, lust isn't necessarily wicked. Okay, but it's what you lust after. Okay, you can you can lust or have desire for your woman. That's that's okay, but when you lust after an, another woman or a married woman, okay, let me say another man's woman or a married woman. Okay, that's the issue. You see, because now having desire towards a woman is not bad. You look at a woman, you're like, yo, she, 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 all right. You know, that's not bad because that's how you, uh, 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 how, how the hell, how the hell are you going to like somebody, you know what I'm saying? Or, or want to be with a woman if you don't have desire for a woman. Okay. But it's, it's, you got to do it according to discipline. All right. So this is verse 13. It says, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. And that's what a lot of people in the world do. They yield their members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Okay? An example, for example, um <laughs> an example, for example. You know, you have you have people, okay, your mouth, for example. Okay, you got people, what do they do with their mouth? They 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 curse the prophets, they curse the most high, they smoke weed, they they you know, they do things, they eat pork, you know? Instead of using that to do these wicked acts, you can use that same mouth, okay, for righteous things. You can use it to prophesy. Okay, you can use it to speak these words. You can use it to eat actual good things that are good for your body. Okay, you know, instead of using your eyes to look at another man's woman, you can use your eyes to read these scriptures. How about that? You know, you can use your eyes, all right, to to uh, uh to to learn new things. Okay, instead of using your mind to lust after another man's woman, you can use your mind to meditate upon these precepts, as the scriptures say here, which I have here, uh, Psalms nineteen and three. Uh, Salakia 19 and 13 Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins Alright Now when you look up that word presumptuous Oh they updated this Oh nice Oh Okay blue letter So it says um, Arrogant, proud, insolent Presumptuous Okay So King David was basically saying what? Keep back thy servant from presumptuous Oh this is I'm really liking this But um Yeah Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins let them not have dominion over me. Let the light... Oh, slack it. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. 
let that let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart meaning his what his mind your heart what it does the actual organ it just pumps blood it's an artery are we i mean it, it pumps blood okay <laughs> it's an organ that pumps blood okay now it doesn't it doesn't meditate <laughs> okay it's your mind that meditates when somebody tells you i love you from the bottom of my heart you're not gonna cut open the person's chest and find the love at, at literally at the bottom of their heart that's not how it works okay the love comes from their their mind all right their spirit so it says um let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart or my mind be acceptable in thy sight okay oh lord my strength and my redeemer now as the scriptures say prove all things let's get into that uh the heart notice how it, the hebrew word here is what lab this is a la and this is a ba la ba but it's together okay so it's lab which means what inner man mind will heart understanding inner part that that voice that voice in your mind when you read okay that voice in your mind when you think that's 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 the lob okay your conscience basically okay um right so like it says here let the and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight so instead of using your mouth to utter vain and wicked things all right use your mouth to to prophesy all right or to or to to spread this word okay Use your mouth to give good advice. Use your, your your hands, all right, to grab hold of these scriptures and to open them up and to read. Use your hands to do good things, all right? These are all part of members of your body physically that you can yield on to serving the Most High. You know, you got certain women that can use their hands to sew. You can make garments, okay? But like it says, but yield yourself. So then there's so many members that you can use, all right, to do different things, Okay? Instead of walking into a strip club, you can you can walk onto the train and get your ass to camp, all right, or whatever the case may be. So it says, but yield yourself onto the Most High, okay, um, as those that are alive from the dead, because when you read a uh, higher in the chapter, it tells you how we we were we were uh, dead with Yahushai, okay, we, we our 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 the sinful version of us, the old man, was crucified with Yahushai, all right. So he took our sins into the grave and he rose up anew just like us so it says um but yield yourself onto the yourselves onto the most high as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness onto the most high okay so you want to you want to you want to use your members all right whichever members you have which matter of fact let's look up this word members melos it says uh, a member a limb a member of the human body of bodies given up to criminal intercourse because they are, as it were, members belonging to the heartless body. All right, we're going to deal with this part. A limb or a member of your human body. So use that for righteousness, okay? You want to use your hands to cook? Cook something that is that is lawful to eat, okay? Verse 14, for sin shall, ha shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace, okay? What then? See? This and this is this is the the part here because if we were if we were under the law, meaning all right, our deliverance was based on the law, we wouldn't be saved, okay. But we are under grace, okay, through Yahushai. That's why that's why we're not we're not a uh, 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 subject, all right, to the uh, we're not we're not what's what's the word we're not servants to sin but we're servants to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, all right. So going on it says what then. Um, shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Okay. You have people that will say, oh, well, the, no. he, here's where they, 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 they go off. Cause they'll say the law is done away with. And that's not what the scripture said. It, it didn't say the law is the law. The law is done away with. It says we're not under the law, but we're under grace. So the law is still there, but our, our salvation is going to, is going to be based on, on the grace and mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Okay. So it said, um, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So if you're a servant of sin, then guess what? Your reward is going to be death. But if you're a servant of obedience, then your your, your reward is going to be righteousness. All right. Now I'm going to uh, jump down. Uh, you know what? Uh 
uh, verse 19. All right. You know what? Now I'll just read through verse 17. It says, But the Most High be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you, meaning what? You're fully persuaded in your mind, all right, that this is the truth, and you obey this truth, okay? It says, being then made free from sin, because how do, how do we how do we become uh, break free from being servants of sin? All right, from leaving the world by coming into this truth. All right, the, the scriptures tell you, um, the book of Revelation, three, verse twenty. All right, it says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock." Now, in essence, what the Lord is doing here, all right, saying I stand at the door and knock, is 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 like um. Um, you know, you know, you know, after maybe a shipwreck or something like that, you have those, those boats that come on looking for any survivors. All right. And they're calling out, Hey, is there anybody there? Any survivors? All right. That's the Lord standing at the door and knocking. It says, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Because when the Lord sups with you, that's your way to gain his salvation. So if you hear them people, like in the movie Titanic, you know, when they came at the end and you had Rose laying on the the little piece that was floating on the water. And then the people were, the, the ship was going there and they were like, bam, bam, you know, blowing the horn, showing the lights. Okay. And then she was like, oh, oh yeah, hey, hey, I'm alive. I'm alive. Hey, hey, come get me. Because guess what? When she responded to their calling, all right, that's how she was saved, you know? So when you respond to this calling, all right, of hearing the prophet's teaching, hearing the Lord speaking through his men, pursuant to Matthew 10 and 20, guess what? He will come and sup with you. And in other words, that's you being rescued. Okay, so like it says here, um, uh, being then made free from sin. When we heard this word, all right, the, the Lord knocking and we opened the door and we allowed him to come in, we were made free from sin because now we knew the way unto righteousness. Like it says, ye became the servants of righteousness because the Lord started supping with us. Okay, so now we knew to, in order to become a servant, you got to know how to serve. So we're being taught how to become servants of righteousness. When you come into this truth, all right. You're free from sin, but now you got to serve. If you're not serving sin, you got to serve righteousness. It's one or the other. It's the flesh or the spirit. So when you stop serving sin, then you that means you're serving righteousness. You're serving the most high. Okay, so being then made from uh, free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members uh, servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity, onto iniquity, okay, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness, onto holiness. And that's the, basically the title of this video, okay? How, how in the past you used, to, you used to use your members you were given, you used to use your legs to walk into a barbershop and get a fresh-ass lineup, crisp and all of that, all right? You used to use your legs to walk into another man's house to go sleep with his wife, okay? Or to take, to take a girl out knowing that she had a man. You know, all these different things, okay? You used to use your mouth to, to sweet talk a girl and talk about TYB season. Take your, take your you know, your, your bitch or your heifer, okay? You know, you used to use your mind to meditate upon upon wicked things. You, you used to use your eyes to cover after something else that belongs to somebody else. And then you used to use your mind to meditate upon how you're going to get it from that person. Those were all yielding your members to doing wickedness and unclean things, iniquity onto iniquity. OK, but now instead of doing that, those same members. All right. You use it for righteousness. OK, you use it for righteousness. Your mind, when you see certain things, when you see pork, you, you, you get disgusted in your mind, you know, whereas you would see wickedness. Now you see you see something else. OK, whereas you would go, uh, you would use your feet to walk towards a, a lady knowing damn well she got a man because you're trying to sweet talk her. Now you would walk away from her. If she, especially, even if, even if she's trying to holler at you, okay, instead of saying, yeah, baby, let me take you out, now you're going to use your mouth for righteousness and say, nah, you got a man, leave me alone, okay? In that essence, you're using your member, your, your mouth, all right, instead of using it for wickedness and trying to sweet talk another man's woman, you're using it for righteousness and denying another man's woman, okay? You're using it for righteousness and reading these scriptures and you're going out there, like what I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm using my member all right, one of my members for righteousness because I'm preaching this word, okay? As where I wasn't, you know, and, and, and back when I was in the world, I wasn't, 
but now now that I'm in the truth, now that I'm, I'm I've been made free, all right, from sin and a servant of righteousness, I'm using all right my members for righteousness. Okay, I'm I'm yielding my members, servants to uh, righteousness unto holiness, and that's why the scriptures say, um, uh, damn. Let me see if I can find it. I know that's Paul wrote that too. Uh, it talks about um basically disciplining your members. Uh, boy, let me see. Let's see if I can find it. Yep, there it is. Colossians 3 and 5. It says, mortify therefore your members. So let's look up that word mortify. Okay. It says to make debt, to put to death, to slay. Okay. To deprive of power, to destroy the strength of. Okay. So now let's read that. Let's read that with context. Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, uh, inordinate affection, evil con uh, concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. All these things are done. These these are all actions that you can commit with your body. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness. Covet you covet what you, what you see. You can't covet if you don't see it, or you don't hear it, or you don't smell it, or you don't taste it. <laughs> all right? Idolatry. When when somebody's idol worshiping, what are they doing? All right, they see the idol in their mind. All right, they're fleeing from the Lord, and they're 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 believing in their mind that this this stone that they see with their eyes, okay, and feel with their hands is a, is another power. So they 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 what they bow down, which is an action that you use your members to commit to commit adultery. So these are all what these are all actions that are committed using your members. All right, your body parts. That's why Paul said, "What mortify therefore your members, okay? Put take away the the the, the power of them to to uh, um to commit sin, all right, and instead use them for righteousness, okay? And if if it won't work, then then like the Lord said, cut cut it off, okay? So verse twenty: For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Because when we were in the world, we didn't have to worry about keeping the Sabbath." When we were in the world, we didn't have to worry about abst abstaining from pork, and and married women, you know, and and uh, uh um uh, uh not getting shape ups, okay, lineups, and all these different things. When we were in the world, we didn't have to do those things. We didn't have to go out there on the highways and byways and prophesy, all right. We didn't have to do these videos. We didn't have to change our lifestyle, and be, and be subject to the laws of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. To the best of our ability. We didn't have to do that. So we were free from righteousness as the scripture said. It says, What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye ye are now ashamed? So all the things that you used to do in, in the in the past that you're ashamed of now because they were wicked, what fruit did you get from that? What 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 good deeds did you get from that? Nothing. It was all vain. It was wickedness. It says, For the end of those things is death. Because what 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 is the wages of sin? Death. So if you were to continue in those wicked things that you used to do, the only thing that would have resulted in is death. And you want to see an example? Look at the two thirds. Okay. They're doing what you what you used to what what we used to do. Okay. And lo and tawadi yahu ba shim side that we don't do those things anymore. But from this side that we've now crossed over onto, we can see what is going to be the fruit of those things that they're doing. What would have happened to us if we continued doing that? If we continued using our members for wickedness and not righteousness? In verse 22, But now being made free from sin and become servants to the Most High. Because when we were, when we were I remember when I was younger, sometimes I'll pick up the Bible and I'll read it and I'll, I'll get cut. I'll feel conflicted, but I wouldn't know how. I didn't know what to do to, 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 be, to be right. You know, I used to think, what, is it just the, the basic things they teach you, you know, oh, be kind, be nice to people, share. So I used to, I used to go to school thinking, yo, I got to share with everybody, man. I can't say no to anybody. I got to be kind. And then freaking 20 minutes into into, into class, I'm already going back to the, the regular me, cursing people out. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, I ain't giving you that. Nah, last time you did me dirty, screw you. I don't care. You know? And then I go home and I'd be like, damn, I was supposed to be kind today. You know? But I didn't. I didn't have. I didn't know how. All right, 
to be righteous. I didn't know how to be a servant of Yahweh Hashem El Shai. So I was trapped. I was trapped, knowing only only how to sin. Okay, because the way of righteousness wasn't made known unto us. Okay, and particularly me at the time, the way of righteousness was not made known unto me. Okay, until I came across the videos, all right, that brothers were doing, all right, and the lessons that then taught me how to use my members for righteousness. Okay, it taught me that, look, you want salvation, you want to be holy, you want to serve the Most High, this is how you do it. So, in essence, it was the escape route from sin. It's what made us free from sin. Learning how to be righteous, having another way out, another option. All right, so verse 22 says, but now being made free from sin and become servants of God, because that's how you that's how you become free from sin. You serve the most high. Not serving the most high is sin. So if you want to if you want to be free from that, you serve the most high. It says ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. See, so in verse 21, it says, what's the fruit of the wickedness, th the wicked things you're ashamed of now? Death. But now that you're not doing that anymore and you're serving the Most High, you know what the fruit of that is? Holiness, being made separate, being, being sanctified, and in turn gaining what? Everlasting life. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. Like I said before, wages are, are, are your payment. Okay? So what happens when you, when you, when you sin? Your payment, your, the paycheck sin is going to give you when you're done working for it is death. Okay? The same way you go to work and every two weeks you get a paycheck that you can use to spend whatever you want. When you sin, the paycheck that you're going to get at the end of the day is death. Okay? And it says here, but the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord. So when you serve the Most High, you know what you're going to be blessed with? A, 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 a salvation, man. Everlasting life. Okay? That's going to be your payment. All right? And we will get a payment, man. Okay, pursuant to Revelation 11 and 18. Let me get that real quick. And also, uh, I got it here. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. All right, so this is Revelation chapter eight, 11, verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints who are Israelites, who are the saints? Israelites. Psalms 50 and 5 tells you that. And them that fear thy name, only Israelites can do that, particularly the elect, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. See? So we, we haven't got our reward yet. But when that's why Yahweh Shai said he's coming with a reward. Okay? Pursuing on, this is a, uh, uh, yep, Hebrews 6 and 10. It says, for the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. See, because when you sin, oh, you going to get, you going to get your, you pay, sin is going to pay you. They, it's going to pay you with death. Same thing with the Most High. You work for the Most High, he's going to pay you. He's not going to forget that you work for him. He's going to pay you with love and righteousness and salvation, deliverance, the kingdom. It says, um, for the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your, your work and labor of love, which he have showed toward his name. In that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And this is why when you do the work, like it says, labor of love. You got to have passion doing this work. Okay? Don't do it as, as, as being forced to. All right? Do it willingly. That you may get a reward willingly, man. Okay? So, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, this is a edifying lesson to the elect. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Bahasham Rechah Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.